July 2020, and we're going to kind of back up and talk about a couple of things. I've been getting a lot of questions about Rusty. First of all, remind people what the role of the county administrator is. People ask me, they get confused about administrator and how everything works in the government. Just remind people, since you've been doing this a while. There are seven members of council. I am employed by the seven members of council. They, in essence, hire me. There are only two employees in the county that the county council hires or has daily dealings with. That is the clerk to council and the county administrator. So they formulate policy and the way the county should go and it is the county administrator's job to carry out those policies and those wishes and their goals. And that's a pretty common, I mean, we, Anderson County didn't start that with home rule. We had superintendent first, right? We had supervisor form of supervisor, government, yeah. which I am probably the only person who worked under the last Anderson County Supervisor, Mr. C. Edward Poor, and then have worked under administrators when I was with the county the first time, and then this time. The last time I was with the county, I was Director of Economic Development and also Assistant County Administrator. Then my 10-year hiatus, then I came back and I'm the administrator. So I've been banging around here for a long time. And one of the things in, in your role is you help uh, sort of aggregate information for council so they'll have everything they need to make good decisions. Is that fair? I think it is fair to say that I overload them with information on a regular basis. If we get, you know, FOIs that are germane to them, I make sure that they get those. Information on COVID-19, they get at least two daily reports from us every day, and that includes Saturday and Sunday. We also get information from our coroner's office. We also get information from admin. So I make sure that they have all of that. In addition to any letters that come to the county administrator that concerns the county issue, I'll make sure that they have a copy of that. And I try to flood them with information so they can make informed decisions. And it may be good information and it may be bad information. But with 204,000 people in Anderson County, a very diverse county, what's on somebody's mind in Powdersville can be entirely different on what somebody's mind is in the Shedder community. So we try to put all of that together and try to assist them in, in that way. So that's what the goal of the county administrator is. And for a county our size, we don't have very many people trying to. No, as we've said thing. before, we have. For a county our size, we have fewer employees than anybody else in the state. But I will tell you that we have some wonderful employees who are able to do more than people in other, in other parts of the state. And we're also fortunate to have a lot of people who are very passionate about what they do. You can buy technical skill and, and degrees and everything all day long. But if you don't get somebody with passion, I don't care to have them here. And we have that group of employees. Our department heads are passionate about what they do. Uh, most of them were born here, so it's not like they're coming in here to get a job. They want the county to do well because they want their county to do well. They want their kids to do well. So it's been a blessing, and uh, I don't see that ever stopping. And you may not know this directly, I mean, I mean in detail, but do most other counties our size have more or fewer councilmen or about the same number? Are we it varies. Greenville has, you know, twice as many as we do, almost twice as many as we do. Pickens has fewer than we do. It varies all across the state because it varies as to, you know, what was originally established. For the longest time, Anderson County only had five council people. It's probably only in the last 20 years that they have gone to seven. And before, before the county council, we talked before it was road commissioners. Well, it was a county supervisor and then councilman, but before that it was road commissioners. And <clears throat> before that, what you had is the legislative delegation <clears throat> did a supply bill every year and determined what the wants, needs, and what the county was going to get. Then when you had the road commissioners, the only thing road commissioners did was build roads. And if you wanted to continue to be elected to, as a road commissioner, you built and paved roads, which is why we have more roads, just county roads around 1,600 miles, which is more roads, and that's discounting the 1,300 that the state has, or the roads within the towns. So we have road, more roads, Anderson County alone, than some countries. 
and that that's a reminder of why it's important to look look ahead for leadership to not saddle the future leaders with something that uh, no because we are saddled with those roads we're saddled with those roads and we have to maintain them I know we've talked about before uh, Anderson County is sort of following the lead of the state on this but where where is council on the 2020 2021 budget well probably well it's going to be like it was last year minus the things that we've already paid for you know so if we've already built this or paved that or done that, then we're not going to do it. There will be no tax increase, nor any other fees associated because people just can't stand them. And you were talking earlier about what council's told me. That's what council has told me, that we are not going to do that. So it will be the same budget and minus some items that we've already uh, completed. Do you know, is there like a, do they have like a schedule when they're going to start first, second, third reading? Well, hopefully sometime in September, but come on, yesterday... In our, in our daily report, we have 61 new cases. A council has indicated they don't want another council meeting in July. We've already had one for July. And we're just taking it. We know we'll have one in August, but I can't tell you when because we don't know what's going to happen in August. And whether you believe this or you don't believe it, I don't think we ought to be putting two and 300 people in a room and to prove it. Right. They did a, there was a recent study that asked 100 of the top uh, businesses in, in America, would they put 12 people in a conference room for 45 minutes? And 100% said no. Yeah. So, well, that's the next thing. A lot of big annual events have been canceled because of the virus, fishing tournaments at Green Pond, Saluda River Alley, the Belton Chili Cook-Off, Pendleton Spring Jubilee. Celebrate other, Anderson. Celebrate Anderson. Well, I was going to get to that. I didn't know Celebrate Anderson was canceled yes. officially. So and We can't have 10,000 people. Right. And you just can't do it. So it's been tough from that standpoint. What other areas that people might not think about have been infected by the virus in the county? Revenue, for one. I mean, if you can't stay in hotels and you can't do things like that, then our accommodations tax revenue goes down, which we use because it can only be used for things that bring in tourism. That's, that's down because people aren't staying in hotels because they're not going anywhere. And if you're not having events that bring people in, they're not coming. And, I mean, you know, air travel's still decimated. Corporate air travel is only now recently picked back up, but that's corporate air travel. Uh, for a while, we had nobody flying into the airport because corporate uh, shut down everything. And our airport depends on the sale of jet fuel to operate it. So it's impacted us in a lot of ways. Plus, And that normally works well. People ask how do you generate revenue at the airport. That normally works pretty well. It works absolutely well, but when they're not flying, we're not. We received, and every other airport in the country received, some stimulus money to fill in that gap. We got around off the top of my head around $75,000 under the second stimulus bill to help us uh, maintain operations there. Has the county gotten any other federal or state money yet? Or? We're, we have some in the pipeline and we've made numerous requests and we're examining everything that we can possibly acquire. And that goes from our emergency preparedness to our road maintenance, to things like that, all of those things. Well, the emergency people have been working overtime, I guess. I mean, this is... The emergency people have been doing a tremendous amount of work, and they've worked all the time, every day. I mean, they're, they're either fumigating buildings or they're teaching people how to fumigating buildings. We are providing services to businesses and companies if they don't know what to do, uh, constantly giving advice to different people. Uh, we imposed stricter regulations in-house on Friday and so those are also going to feed feed over into the court system so by the end of the day today that we will have masks to give out to anybody that's going into any of our courts that includes the courts in in uh, Belton in Pendleton so we're going to put all of that we were doing that but now we've ratcheted and made it even tougher they're going to require we were. it now if people oh need, yes yeah. so that begins the and day. if you notice people walking around in these halls you don't have to wear a mask in your office, but as soon as you hit that common area, you'll put on a mask. What about um, the you know elections folks? How much more does it cost them to have to make all these extra preparations and, and going towards November? Has that been more expensive to get ready on? Oh, it's definitely going to be more expensive, and, and we've supplied them with masks and cleaning supplies, but we're doing that just about everywhere. We participated in a great event this weekend with the Anderson Strong, participated with the city, where at the West Side Community Center, we gave out tons of masks. Then we did it at the Lowe's, the South Lowe's, the North Lowe's, handing them out, and free t-shirts. So we've been 
doing that, religiously doing that. Has the virus, I mean, this is sort of a, a broad stroke question, but have affected the self-insured policy for county employees? Have you had a lot of people sick? Or no, is it not, not, not much in vent? No, not, no, that hasn't caused a lot of that. Um, and, and we won't know for a while how much federal or state funds we're eligible for, or it's just ongoing, right? It's ongoing, and I'm pretty sure there'll be a third stimulus bill. And you, back, I don't want to leave it too far and too, too much about it, just make it about emergency, but if we get into winter months again, they're going to have this and back to ice storms and all the other stuff to deal with, so they're going to be in a, in a, in a bind again. <laughs> well, we do have the best emergency management division that you can have, and we have dedicated and passionate people there. So we're used to rising to challenges, and we've been in a rising to challenge mode now since five months ago, so I'm sure we'll be able to handle it. But what we worry about, and I know, and I can't speak for AnMed, although I know they're slammed with COVID patients, and I also know they're slammed with COVID patients who aren't 80 years old. So that myth is just killing old people. That's a myth, because I know of cases where people are lots younger than you and I, with no underlying symptoms, and they're up there, okay? So that is a dire situation, just so people will understand that they're not making this up, that it really is dire. And if there's a hurricane or something, if we've always a, been here, asked. Here, 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 here's your trifecta. Flu, pneumonia, and COVID at the same time screaming in September. Every year we have flu deaths. We do. Now you've got COVID and pneumonia sometimes can be brought on by those two things and hurricane season is coming up so we're not going to get a hurricane but sometimes we get the backlash from it and our emergency people are always going down to help right and or being asked to come help they're always they always ask us to come down there because a we will and b we know what we're doing that's a credit to them that's not a credit to me but they know what they're doing but by doing that Whenever we need anything, we're covered up with people asking for assistance from us. And uh, Duke Energy kind of likes us because anytime there's a big event in the tri-state or even larger area, uh, they use our Civic Center because our Civic Center is an emergency backup facility, graded, rated, and approved. So, you know, we think if they're going to operate in an emergency, I just soon have them in Anderson County at the Civic Center and work their way out. Right, they built that new battery backup. Whatever yes, that we have is. that new battery backup out there. So if the power goes out, we're good there. Well, you answered part of this next question, but I know at recent council meetings, chairs have been appropriately distanced, temperature has been checked, masks are offered. Is there any chance if this continues that uh, the, the requiring a mask will extend to the council meetings too when we get to August? It, it could very well possibly do that. 61 new cases yesterday. I don't even know what it is today. I will shortly. And we had some 60, 60 days last week. Yes, records. The, 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 we've had most of our cases in the last three weeks, I think. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, in, in, in council meetings recently just kind of shifted into current business. Been a lot of people show up concerned about zoning. Can you, and again, this is, a, this is a loaded question. I didn't give you time to prepare for this, but can you give people just an overview of what zoning in Anderson County is like? And, you know, and why zoning in Anderson County is like this. By ordinance, if somebody wants an area zoned, that council person has to initiate a petition. Then those people fill out that petition, and if they're enough on that petition, then it goes to a vote. And then if it's favorable, it goes into effect. The last one we did was in the Powdersville area that was sponsored by then Councilman Ken Waters, uh, and that didn't come to fruition. So, A, part of Anderson County is zoned. The other part is under land use regulations that do not specify where something can go. It does specify if this goes there, you have to do these things. So it's a lot less restrictive than zoning. Zoning tells you like, you can put a house here, you can put a farm here, you can put a business here, that. And another misconception sometimes when people say, well, we zone this and now these people have come in here and they request a rezoning change. Every citizen 
in Anderson County has the right to request a rezoning change on property they own or control. They have that right. We cannot deny them that right. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna be approved, but you can request it. And we get that. Somebody buys a piece of property, somebody says, this is a little, uh, I wanna restrict it even more because I'm never selling this property and I wanna make sure it's this way. Then we have other people who said, well, I know you got it zoned this, but we'd like to change it from single family residential to Disney World. Those usually don't fare well, but they have the right to ask. On land use regulations, if you disagree or you want something, all of that goes to the development board, okay? If something's in a zoned area, zoning board handles that, then it goes to county council. So it's kind of complicated, but you know that's the basic outline of how it works. And, and this was born out of, in the early years of, after home rule started, the earliest uh, controversies I remember was countywide zoning. Somebody wanted to come in and zone everything, get it on the books. But Former councilman came in one day and said, I'm in a zone Powdersville. Next week came back and said, I don't know why y'all convinced me to do that, but this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And nobody had convinced him to do that. He just decided to do it. But you and I remember when that was the big issue. Was, oh, was I know it's the big zoning. Look, the whole county look zoned. I was here when we imposed land use regulations, and you would have thought that communism was taking over Anderson County. And they don't tell you where you can put things. It just tries to say, well, if you're going to put this here, maybe you need this buffer, and maybe you need to leave this uh, much space between things, and maybe you need to plan a few things over here. So, yes. But what you have, and this is not unique to Anderson County, it is not unique. You have half the people who have lived here all their life. Then you have another group coming in. Anderson is hot, okay? It's hot. Powdersville, proximity to Greenville. Pendleton, Anderson, 81, all of those areas, they're hot. Everybody wants to come in here and get a piece of it. And I'm telling you, everybody wants to get a piece of it. And then you have people who've moved here 5, 10, 15 years ago, and they moved here because it was nice and peaceful. Well, your buddies found out about this and they want a part of it. So that's what you have. And I can tell you that council, <clears throat> we had discussions Friday about what you can do to uh, maybe tighten some things up, what you can do on land use to make land use a little harder. Are you looking at conservation zoning? Is that something that the county wants to incentivize? I can tell you that that is first on the list of every council person's mind. But when you have growth coming in like we do, you're going to have disruptions and people are going to be unhappy. And the simple, one of the things we're doing now is if somebody's coming in with a mega development, is we're going to have them meet with council person from that area and say, look, this is coming. Because that council person can usually say, well, that's good. Y'all need to go ahead and do that. But when it comes up before me, I'm voting against it. But planning law <clears throat> comes from the state. We have to operate under the State Planning Act. So the things we do are controlled by that. So we can't say, well, we got a good idea. Let's go do that. If it's not in the State Planning Act, you can't do that. So... Well, can the conservation stuff be worked in? Because that is the one thing, like you said, everybody wants to live in the same area <clears> of the county, but the, the pastures and the woods are disappearing and that the noise levels are increasing and there are, like you said, some developers coming in, just plow over all the trees and get rid of all the green space and everything. Is that going to be a priority in moving forward? And that seems like there is a priority. It is a priority to some degree right now, but maybe it needs to be a little more. We've heard people say, well, y'all need to do a plan, but we do a plan every five years and we have massive public involvement, which we have on record. But you still have that situation. I had a lady tell me the other day that Anderson County had never done any planning and she didn't know where it was. So I said, I guess I've gone crazy. So I went and looked at her website and everything that we've done is on there. And we're coming up on the next five-year plan. And zoning recommendations should follow your five-year comprehensive plan, which you have to do by law, by the state, which you have to have massive public input. In the past, when things weren't so wide open, eh, I'm going to let them, I'm, I could go to that meeting or I could go to that ball game. I think I'm going to the ball game. Now it's like, I ain't going to that ball game. I think I'm going over here and participate in local democracy in Anderson County. And you're seeing more of that, and I think that's a good thing.
Yeah, it has brought a lot more people out to council yes. meetings. Well, and, and that kind of feeds into what we were talking about earlier about roads, because with that planning and those the new de developments and all those it's the roads, I have seen more road construction both from SEDOT and Anderson County than I can ever remember at one time. Well, we get uh, the state that penny penny tax has. I mean, you know, you have to give people a year to collect the money, but now they're going wide open. And if you look, Anderson County is getting a lot more money than a whole lot of other places on that, and. Thank goodness for our Anderson County Transportation Committee. I mean, they just uh, voted to fix up about 15 roads the other day, and that's a continuing pot of money that gets refreshed. And so, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. But again, and I've said this on air one time before, I mean, I literally had a lady who drove on a brand new road. It hadn't been there two days. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, probably the best road in the state, and came and told me that she didn't know where that money was going. And I know she just rode on it because she told me she did, so. And there are a lot of road projects going on right now. People can find those online. They'll yes, and they're, and they're more coming. It, I've seen a big difference. I mean, I, you know, and I, know, I know that said, we still don't have the money we need to no. fix and maintain no, but, 1,600 but are you gonna, miles, 1,530 But are you going to impose something when you've got 12% of the population unemployed and you don't know when they're going to go back to work? You can't do that. You just can't do that. One of the things council is, uh, has been talking about approving is this uh, private investor building an industrial park. Why yes. is that important for the county? Okay, case in point. Let's look at this, okay? Uh, the Greenwood County has approved a 100,000 square foot building that they're going to use their penny capital tax to build. They're doing that on North Highway 25, near Hodges, okay? That's gonna cost millions of dollars. We have a private investor going into an opportunity zone who's going to build a 55,000 square foot building that we're gonna be able to market, but we don't have a dime in it. So he's building that building for us, private enterprises doing that. Are we gonna take everybody who's looking for a 55,000 square foot building to that site, absolutely we are, because we want him to get so happy that he'll want to build another one and another one. So yes, that works well. And the last couple of times Anderson County has done that, we it was sold before we sold could. before we even built it. So finally, after you prime the pump, people go, there must be something going on here. And I can assure you, even during COVID, we're covered up with industry wanting to come here. And you're about to see whether you like it or not because this is free enterprise you're about to see a commercial boom especially in the pendleton area powdersville area in the greater anderson area i'm telling you i mean we see them and that kind of leads to my next question arthrex and tti and first quality seem to, to continue to grow and expand have they exceeded the expectations county has? every last one of them has i mean first quality yes and i think it's going to exceed the exceeding, exceeding expectations. And Arthrex, hey, if you need a hip joint, we're here for you, baby. That's kind of, in a way, they're doing real good. They probably have 260 working there right now on their way to do what they said. And what was the other one you mentioned, Greg? Uh, TTI. And TTI, I can assure you they've done more than they told us, and I can assure you they're fixing to do more than they ever told us. Never seen so many buildings going up. The you hadn't seen the last of them. And Arthrex is continuing to hire, it looks like. They're headed towards 2,000 eventually, maybe? Eventually. Clean eventually. jobs. And Clean jobs, high-paying jobs. Uh, how important... Let's don't forget people like Sergeant Metal. True. The other night, they're adding 50. Places. <clears throat> I mean, that's homegrown business right there. <clears throat> Let's don't forget TAC Med, which we did the other night. They're right. going to hire 30 jobs, pay an astronomical amount of money. And <clears throat> yeah, $34 an hour. $34 something. an hour. But here's the thing. They're going to make robots that you can go practice medicine on. Do we have them right now? We absolutely do. They use them at, An at uh, Anderson University every day. This is the next generation. I mean, you get cut the carotid or artery will go. I mean, this thing is going to be almost a human, and the fact is, it's made right here in Anderson County. It's not made in Silicon Valley or some biomechanical uh, hotspot. It's being made right here in Anderson County, and I just love to tell people that. There's no more need for digging up cadavers. <laughs> That's a good idea. There, you know. No more cadavers. They, they really do. Dr. And Frankenstein, they, those, you know. I, I saw a video on those things that they... 
they're very easy to reuse and repair and fix and, and this one, you know, this person will be able to talk to you, somebody in a remote room, where does it hurt? It hurts here. But this is like the next generation. What's the latest on the old TTI building? We call it Singer, Ryobi, whatever you want to call it. Get, get, remind <clears> me <throat> how the county got that and what's been done. Well, since we already had the training class out there, forklift training, which is a huge demand in industry. We are training people for lineman jobs with Duke and the co-op, so we're running that program right now. That's going on out there. Part of the Sheriff's Department's out there already. Public Works is out there. Stormwater's out there. Water and sewer's out there. Not, sewer's not out there yet. A uh, whole lot of offices out there. Uh, we're still renting parts of that building to TTI, which brings income into the county. The other day we had a request to store some free, free cat food to uh, the Humane Society. They didn't have a place to put it. We said, sure, you can put it over here. So it's continuing to do what it's supposed to, but we're continually putting people in there. So hopefully we'll get everybody moved in there eventually, but it's just taking a little time to do it right. How important has it been as a landing space for new industrial development? Very much so, because I've got people waiting right now to come into the TTI building when another group gets out of that building. So it's not like, I wonder if it's going to be. It's like, when they leave, boom, they're here. And that's not something every county has. Is no, landing. some counties have it. But we went and stole a great idea, and we, and we did it here. Plus, we're going to be really heavily involved with small business development, not in competition with the city, but in concert with the city. So we're looking towards doing that. Are there any other economic development announcements you could talk about? No, jobs? but there are two more, but I can't talk about them right now But because then, then I'd have to be shot. Yeah, tell people just but they're one, very one clean. why you can't talk about stuff like that. Well, a lot of times it's competition from their rivals, and they don't want their rivals to know what's going on because, I mean, you know, it, it's point it's how they work. And I don't want another county to know that I'm about to get this industry because somebody will come and try to steal it. I know they will. Yeah, Anderson County has been, has really exhibited expertise in economic development. How, is there a general period of time how long it takes from first contact to bringing in a new company or is that just, just depends on the company or? I have, I have worked a project. I have worked a project that took two years I have worked a project and thought I lost that project and then that project came roaring back and then I've been in a six month which is pretty fast because if they if they uh, get in state incentives we need to do three readings on county council that they come in they go bang and, and they're up and running but I mean but all of our companies E and I the Irish electrical <coughs> switch gear manufacturer just going they're fixing to add, add on to their space and hiring everybody they can. So that doesn't, that's not slowing down, but I worry about people who are waitresses or have jobs that are very susceptible to COVID. You know, I know that a lot of these industries will train you and take you from that job. I just don't, my number one thing has always been, I don't like to see anybody unemployed and I don't care what you do. If you get a job sweeping, if you sweep real good, they might promote you. But all of these jobs I'm talking about are not sweeping jobs. And now you've got the new academy <clears throat> over there, school district five, and district three, and district two, and they're throwing people out. And uh, I mean, it's, there's just a lot going on. It's just gonna take some shifts in thinking for a lot of people who don't know their other options and kind of getting people. And in. we're trying to provide that. This is a way to do that. Well, I don't know anything, I didn't do this. Well, you can do something like work keys and get industry ready. There are a lot of ways to get in there and get started. Anderson County still has the most international development in the state, 52 companies, 18 countries. What, what are some of the things that you and Council and Burris Nelson and his team do to uh, showcase Anderson to attract international business in Anderson County? Why, what are the chief things that attract international The best thing that attracts international business is having international business. That don't mean seriously because they say, hey, these people came over here, they were treated well, uh, they were absorbed in the community. Why don't we look at that? Bosch, case in point, okay? You know, let's do that. And Bosch, people don't talk about Bosch. Bosch is a major miracle at what they do out there every day. I mean, we're blessed to have that. When that project was working, people don't remember this, but a man named Mr. Nord came in there and built that building. It was called Nord Refrigeration. He had a death in the family and they abandoned it. We were marketing that building to Bosch and Grumman. 
the aircraft people at the same time. And Bosch bit first. Thank goodness Bosch bit first. So, I mean, and that took that took a year. It's just it's just all it's just different things. Like the lake and quality of life and well, that's temperature, how, I mean, and climate kind of things. Look, if I have another industry person tell me that they saw Lake Hartwell and then figured out Anderson was by Lake Hartwell, that's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. All right, shifting gears again. The county is now, for the first time since really the founding, on, on, uh, the owner of all the original property, the plat that goes from yes. Murray to McDuffie, or yes. what used to be old people's yep. to McDuffie. Yep. Um, you know a lot about that. Tell, you Remind people what these streets were called over here and over there. I can't remember all that today after the morning I've had, but I mean, as we've talked before, most places there was a town that they built a county around it. That's almost 95%. Here, they built a county and then said, won't we put a town? We're going to put a town in the middle of it. And you know the old legend about they were arguing where they were going to build the courthouse. So they went to a tavern and one of the guys came out and stuck his walking stick in the ground and said, this is where we're going to do it. So, so that's always a little different and interesting to me. And you and I talked about the General's Road, which nobody knows why it's called the General's Road, but Main Street's the General's Road. And then people don't know about the Cherokee Trail that runs through Anderson. I mean, you know, you can actually go see parts of it. And it's just wonderful things, wonderful historical things, and just so many things going on around here about different things, it's just incredible. Well, and that sort of leads us to, we got some big decisions on the county courthouse square property. Um, what's the latest on those plans? The latest on that plan is uh, hopefully we're going to see some uh, concrete plans in the next week or two. That doesn't mean we're going to accept them. It is just something we're looking at. Uh, I can tell you that council would will not do anything until they're 100% in agreement and they think it will have a substantial impact for 100 years. Nobody's looking for five years and saying, boy, look what we did. It has to be for the long haul. And since the county owns the property, they have that, that possibility. And nothing would happen unless there was a lot of public input, a lot. But I will tell you one thing, it's very nice to ride, ride into town and see that hotel going up and seeing that crane up there in the eye. That sends a huge signal. And I know a lot of property has recently changed hands here in the core, Anderson core. And I think you're fixing to see some more exciting things happen in the downtown area. And I really think the downtown area might be moving past these, these several blocks here. What would you like to see on that property? I mean, is there something that, I mean, just vision casting kind of stuff you'd like to see over there that would be good for 100 years? years yeah, this is what i like to see, but this is not what's going to happen. <laughs> I'd love to see a, a concert hall. I would like to see condominiums. I would like to see terraces. I'd like to see restaurants. I'd like to see all of those things. Rooftop to, rooftops vision. to make it the most bustling place in the world. I'd like... The thing I want, no matter what, I would want an observation tower on the top with a public elevator that any time anybody in Anderson County said, I want to go to the top, they could get on that elevator and mash a button and go look all over Anderson. It wouldn't cost them a dime. Now, I don't have an unlimited checkbook, and neither does Anderson County. So what we're trying to do is incorporate things that have, A, a wow factor, but something that really means something for people after we're dead and gone. But it is going to be mixed use. It will absolutely. Not going to be a bunch of offices. No, no, a, no. A bunch of offices wouldn't work. Let's talk about other projects real quick. Where are we with the sewer, Pendleton, Clemson, Anderson County sewer? Uh, still, uh, I'm ready to go. Pendleton and Clemson are still figuring out. Uh, Clemson has a new administrator, and I think Andy's settling in. And you talk about no growth. Uh, Clemson has declared no growth whatsoever, but that's a confined space. So we're working towards that. I'm open for it, but I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket. How about, are we any closer unveiling or sign on 85 on the it, Georgia line? You can go look at it right now, and, and uh, some landscaping has been done, so it's open. We will have an unveiling of some sort? We will whenever we can have one and people not die. Well, people don't, didn't come out to the other one. It was just sort of... Well, there more people came out. When we went out in that parking lot... I don't remember that many people. Well, there's about 30. Oh, well, that's true. I had 30. I... 
I guess I'm thinking of bigger crowds. All right, since this 2020 is still underway in Anderson County, I looked last night, 63%, which is one of the best in the state. But it's still not good enough. 1% over the national average. I was going to say, remind the 37% who haven't responded why it's still important. It's important for your representation, for government, your council person, your house member, your senate member, your federal house member, federal senate. It is the influence that Anderson County will have. <clears throat> it depends on how many people live here, and if you don't, you will be underrepresented, which means you get not much money and nobody pays attention to you. So you need to register. Anderson has grown. Anderson, to me, has always been the capital of the third district, and we need to maintain that by everybody participating in the census. It is in the Constitution of the United States. It is against the law not to fill out your census. This is not for devious means, <clears throat> secret means. you got to know how many people you have <clears throat> in order to be able to take care of them. And we lose a lot of funding, too, if we don't. About 800 bucks a person. Uh, farmer's markets reopen. I mean, it's been open now for a while on Thursdays and Saturdays with safe distancing math, other health safety plans. Um, how is it doing this year considering the restrictions? Uh, it's going gangbusters. But this is the time of the year that goes gangbusters because July is when everything's in. We haven't had crafters come back in, and some of the crafters are getting upset about that. And I fully understand them getting upset about it. But the option is not to have a farmer's market, but to do a farmer's market. And if you do the farmer's market, concentrate on food, what people can use. And I'm also happy to report <clears throat> that, you know, we gave away all the food vouchers. But because Anderson County did such a good job, <clears throat> our Parks and Rec Department, they had some left over, so they're going to send us some more. And that's just so people can go buy fruits and vegetables, not don't have to at the farmer's market, but they tend to spend a lot of money at the farmer's market, which helps our local farmers. And that'll be later this month, the yes. second round, this mm -hmm. July. And we, we talked about Celery and Anderson's canceled. Um, and no more council meetings in July, but there'll probably be one in August. Yes. That's, um, it's, uh, I was gonna mention too, and you touched on this earlier, people, I've heard people at council meetings from all walks of life, <laughs> say it's difficult to find information. I, I, I'm confused a little bit with Facebook and the county's website, why people are having trouble finding information. It's it's out there. There's plenty of, well, I, I was flabbergasted and they said, well, y'all have never done a plan. Not only have we done plans, we've done corridor studies. And we did, we had public meetings last week on Powdersville on recreation. If you go to our website, you can find this out. And you have people say, well, you know, I don't, I don't know about this. Go to our website. If you want to know, if you want us to email you a county council agenda, we'll be happy to the do that. The whole packet, if you The know. whole packet. Just, we just ma put your name and mash the button and boom, there you go. And you will know everything that's on that council agenda, when that meeting is going to take place. On the Friday before it. Yeah. And you can also, you know, go to our planning website and it will tell you when planning meetings are held and all of those things are held. It's on there. Um, and I think a lot of people say they don't get information. I think sometimes, not all, but they don't get information in the old traditional way. And those days are not coming back from that old traditional way where you had a newspaper that was that thick and everything was in there, including Cousin Lucy visited Aunt Martha. That's not And that. all had a good time. And all had a good time. They always had a good time. And just in terms of other things about the, the important people and interesting things where people need to tune in to the county's TV station and YouTube. And Channel 193 and on every other platform. There's a lot of historical information, but there's a lot of good usable information on there. Let you know what your neighbors are doing, uh, some of the good things going on in Anderson. We may tend to put a lot of the good things going on in Anderson because people don't know all of the good things going on in Anderson. And people in Pendleton might not know what's going on in Belton. And people in Iva might not know what's going on in Powdersfield. So we try to give a broad county perspective. Case in point, you know we had the Belton Tennis Championships last weekend going on today. You, going back to something you said earlier about COVID, no publicity because they didn't want spectators. Couldn't have spectators, couldn't do it safely. So just another victim, just a stray thought popping in. And those are the kinds of things, like you said, that when there were, uh, in, in older days when they had huge staffs, people would report, and people would not know these stories if they weren't on the county's True. media things. All right, well, we'll finish like we always do. We're only about four months away now 
from the county beginning to assemble the Christmas tree, which yep. as of this year will actually put us, uh, if my figures are right, about 15,000 into black, even with all the additions. Uh, I'd go around 10, but we're getting there. Because I was doing the math when they did it. But we're lighting up the Christmas tree. Yeah, and it's going to be bigger again this and year. And we may just drive by and wave at the Christmas tree, but it's going to be bigger, and we're lighting up the Christmas tree. And as we continue to add that um, before Thanksgiving, so people coming home for Thanksgiving weekend, then Absolutely. it will be off for the public. That's what we change. public lighting. And yep. But if you come home for Thanksgiving, you're going to see that tree lit. Now, we'll turn it off the next, you know, after that weekend, then do our big pump. But it's just not right not to have it for Thanksgiving. And music from the courthouse tower. Always. Christmas music. Always. Just wanted to finish up with people thinking cool thoughts. And if, if people do have any questions or, or want to keep up, you've got the website and Facebook page and then the, the, the video, YouTube, and the, if you and have And you charges. can email me at any point in time. And I get every one of my emails and I try to respond to them.